Yo, what's going on guys? My name is FMJ. Welcome to the 9.2 Windwalker Mythic Plus Guide. We're going to be going over quite a few things today, so make sure you pay attention. There's going to be timestamps down below, so if you need to click on a specific section, go ahead and do that now. Windwalker Monk is one of the uh, most agile and strongest Mythic Plus classes of Shadowlands. However, due to tier and double legendary, monks have kind of fallen off on the AoE spectrum. However, they're still within top 5 range for AoE. Their single target is suffering tremendously right now, but there is another 4% nerf coming in on Tuesday, um, which may help that out a little bit. Overall, uh, Windwalker Monk in Mythic Plus is still viable to do high keys, 20s and higher. Um, there are even some Windwalker Monks doing 25 and 26 currently, which uh, is pretty good given the current state of Monk. Alright, so what we're going to go over first is we're going to go over talents for Mythic Plus. So the talents for Mythic Plus are virtually the same for every single key, regardless of affix. You're always going to want to play Chi Burst. Um, the second row is kind of personal preference, but Tiger's Lust is really great for specific dungeons when you need a freedom and you don't have a pally. Ascension is the go-to for the third row, and then Ring of Peace is always going to be your fourth row. Uh, the fifth row is always going to be Diffuse Magic, that is completely baseline. You can reflect a lot of spells, a lot of magical spells during boss fights, which do around 20-25% to 25 of your single target damage. And then row 6 is Dance of chi -Gi, which is, you know, Windwalker's thing. And then row 7 is Whirling Dragon Punch. There's virtually no variation from this if you're a different covenant or a specific key you're always going to want to use these talents no matter what now my plan was to go over every single covenant at max renown for this guide however i'm only going to be highlighting three covenants um, the one covenant that we will not be talking about today is venthyr because venthyr is so far behind um, it's virtually useless for windwalker and then tied in second place uh, is Kyrian and Night Fae. Both have their ups and downs. Kyrian is a very strong single target. Uh, Night Fae is kind of a mixture of both sustained damage. And you have the number one pick coming out at Necrolord. So out of the three soul binds, um, you're always going to pick a many. And you're kind of want to hug the left side of the wall. In terms of conduits, this kind of varies depending on who you're playing with and what your preference is. Um, the potency conduits are always going to be Bone Marrow Hops, Coordinated Offensive, and Calculated Strikes. Those will never change, regardless of Affix, Covenant, or Difficulty. And then you will have one Finesse Conduit available. Preferably, I do Dizzying Tumble. Um, this is really good for if you need to sweep uh, defensively for your tank. And then when the mobs come out of sweep, they're doing less damage overall. Uh, if you're short on movement, you could also play Tumbling Technique or Swift Transference. There's no reason to ever play Lingering Numbness. That's kind of a bad uh, conduit in my opinion. Now for your Endurance Conduits, um, this is also personal preference. Personally, I play Harm Denial, which increases Expel Harm's healing by 50%. Since this ability is always in your rotation, you'll constantly be healing yourself with this um, compared to using Condensed Animosphere, which is just kind of a passive 5% uh, heal. And then the second Endurance Conduit that I'm using currently is Fortifying Ingredients. This is just another layer of health and defensive from Fort Brew, which is one of your main three or four defensives that you have as a Windwalker Monk. Now that we've gone over the basics for Necrolord Windwalker, uh, let's just hop right into your rotation, um, what buttons you should be pressing first, what's your priority going into packs, and everything like that. Alright, to start off, we're going to be going over the AoE rotation guide uh, for Windwalker Monk. This is ideal for 4 to 8 targets, preferably. First, you're going to start off with the Fleshcraft, and then you will be using Expel Harm before the pull begins to get some Chi. Chi burst into the pack as the tank rolls. You'll be starting with 3 Chi. You'll put your images out, Tiger Palm. Um, apply all those stacks, you'll then pop all your CDs, focus your targets, and then you will start spinning based off of this. In an AoE situation, you are able to drop your mastery stacks, so I recommend that you spam spinning crank kick as much as possible during Bone Dust Brew and Tiger to get the most output. After 10 to 15 seconds, you're going to want to start reapplying your um, Dance of Chi G stacks on the targets, so you're going to be tab targeting around. After your Bone Dust Brew goes away, you can start actually applying the mastery stacks and making sure you keep those up so you can rotate your abilities 
At about 30 seconds into the pack, you can start using Fist of Fury on rotation. Um, you can kind of mix in all your other single target abilities based on what target needs to be prioritized. And then obviously you'll be also getting your Whirling Dragon Punch during that time. And then after the first minute, um, you'll have images and Bone Dust Brew back up, so you'll continue doing the exact same rotation once those come alive. Ideally, a pack will last between um, 45 seconds and a minute and 15 seconds. So you'll be using your CDs, um, your two minutes every other pull, and then your one minutes every single pull. Now this also varies depending on how much you pull, what key level you're in, so you guys kind of just have to play it by ear and understand when to use things. During Bone Dust Brew, your entire priority should be spinning Crane Kick. Um, I see a lot of people asking questions about if they should use Fist of Fury, Rising Sun Kick, and then get a Whirling Dragon Punch in with that. Um, that is very situational depending on your key level, how much you're pulling, everything like that. Personally, um, if I'm ever going to use that or do that, uh, I'm going to Fist of Fury and Rising Sun Kick before I even pop my images, and then I go into the pack, Bone Dust Brew, instantly Whirling Dragon Punch, and then Spam Spinning Crane Kick afterwards. In the description below, I'm actually going to put the links to these um, AoE and single target rotation that we're about to go over in full speed, so you guys can kind of see that in real time. And also, if you need to slow it down to 0.25 or 0.5, you can do that through YouTube. There's also going to be a ton of helpful um, examples in the description as well. There's also going to be links to my previous keys where AOE rotation is being used quite frequently. So I recommend if you're struggling in that department, you go check that out. Alright, so now we're going to head over to the single target rotation for boss fights and any primary adds that you have to kill. So first you're going to Fletchcraft before the pull if you have it available. You're then going to expel harm and then you're going to chi burst into the boss once the tank starts to pull. You'll then use your images, pop all your cooldowns, fixate the images, and then you're going to use your rising sun kick as soon as possible. Fist of Fury. You're going to do the full channel for this. So you're going to let this go through. Then you're going to tiger palm again. You'll be rotating your tiger palm and blackout kick, uh, intermediately putting in your expel harm. If you have any Chi G procs, you'll be using those primarily. And then when your Rising Sun Kick comes up again, you'll use that and continue rotating those around. Single target rotation is all about maintaining your mastery stacks and being able to always have Chi available to use. Uh, you don't want to sit down in the middle of a fight and have to wait five or six seconds because you ran out of Chi or you ran out of energy. So you want to be sure that you're rotating those abilities efficiently and that you're not dropping your mastery stacks. A lot of people ask me if they should be um, full channeling Fist of Fury or not. It kind of really depends on the situation. During your primary opener with all your cooldowns, you will um, focus and use your entire duration of Fist of Fury unless you get a Chi G proc. And then if you're doing your normal rotation without CDs, um, you will use your Fist of Fury for at least half duration. Canceling your Fist of Fury is really dependent on your energy and your Chi. If you notice that you're below 40% energy, and you are also below 2 Chi, I recommend you do not cancel your Fist of Fury and you kind of let yourself come up and uh, kind of collect your resources again. So yeah, this clip I have kind of recorded here is just me hitting a target dummy for about 2 minutes. Most boss fights will last between um, 2 minutes and 30 seconds and 3 minutes and 30 seconds depending on the key level and if it's tyrannical or fortified. Like I said, I will also be posting these clips down in the description below so you guys can check those out whenever. If you need to slow them down or speed them up in full time, you can also do that. In the description below is also going to be a link to the Peak of Serenity website, which is kind of just the Monk class Discord. On their website, they kind of have an ability priority list. Um, keep in mind, this isn't a, a direct rotation, but more so what ability should be always used first. Um, some of this will not apply to us because we do not have those talents. So you'll see things such as um, Fist of Fury or Weapons of Order or Fallen Order. Or if uh, you see Night Fae, Fae Line Stomp, you'll also ignore those in the rotations. They also kind of have a basic opener that you guys can look at and follow. Uh, the one that I do is a little bit different than this, but this is kind of the same situation in terms of single target. So you guys can also use that as a guide. I'll also be putting a link in the description below to the 
Peak of Serenity Discord, where you guys can ask questions in the uh, the Windwalker uh, discussion or the Windwalker questions and help tab. A decent bit of my information actually has come from Peak of Serenity and a little bit of other higher Mythic Plus um, Windwalkers and also a little bit of my own twist on it. So if you see something that kind of contradicts what I'm saying, just put a comment down below, ask the question, and I can help you try to figure that out. Or if it's something completely brand new that I haven't even thought of, then I'll also check that out for myself. All right, so the next section we're gonna be going over is um, your stat weights, your gear, and the tier. We'll also be going over the legendary choice and where you should be putting those on to get the most out of your class. So to start off with stat weights, um, preferably what I like to run is 40% crit, 5 to 7 percent haste 20 percent mastery and 20 percent verse ideally when you get to hierarchies above 24 you're going to want to swap that 5 percent mastery for another 5 percent of verse so it'll be 15 percent mastery and 25 percent verse this isn't really a damage loss or increase this is more just a survivability uh, thing that will help you take less damage in terms of your gear there are a few things that you are going to make sure you want to have um, your best in slot and neck is either going to be the 262 crafted neck or if you get a 278 neck that has crit or verse out of the vault you'll be using that for rings your two best in slot rings are the entwined gorge or tendril which comes from sanguine depths and then ritual commander's ring which comes out of necrotic wake you will never replace these rings unless you get a 285 off of rigalon which is the crit and mastery heavy ring um, it's a pretty good ring the stat increase alone from the seven item level is well worth it in terms of trinkets, what I like to run is File of Putrefication, which comes out of Plaguefall. And then the second trinket is up to personal choice. You can either run First Sigil, um, the PvP badge trinket, which gives you crit every minute, which lines up perfectly with Bone Dust Brew. You can also play IQD. You can also play Cash, which drops off of Artificer Zymox and Sepulchre of the First Ones. The second trinket is more up to personal preference and what you have at your disposal. If I had an upgraded PvP badge, I would be playing that over the first sigil, but currently this is what I'm working with. In terms of weapons, you're always going to want to roll with two one-handed weapons, unless you get a 285 polearm off of Jailer in your vault. For the single target weapons, your best in slot is Pockstorm Longsword of Pestilence, which drops out of Plaguefall. The damage increase from the, um, the unequip effect is so good that a 272 version of this will actually sim higher than a normal 278 weapon. In terms of your tier, I like to run helm, shoulders, chest, and legs because that gives you the best possible output of uh, stat weights from the tier pieces. The reason I don't run the gloves is because they're haste heavy and they also have mastery on them, which isn't, you know, the most ideal stat weights that you want. In terms of your legendary, you'll be obviously using the unity um, you're going to be putting this on your belt so you can get a free socket. You'll probably get the most benefit out of putting it on your belt. Some monks like to put it on their fifth tier piece that they're not using, so they would be putting it on their hands in this circumstance, which isn't too bad of an idea as long as you can get a good 278 belt. And then the second legendary you'll be running is Invoker's Delight. Um, this is baseline for all forms of content. For your legendaries, you're going to want to be putting crit and verse on them primarily, Unless you're over the crit cap or you're over the 25% verse that you want, then you obviously substitute in mastery. Alright, so the last section that we're going to be going over today are macros, weak auras, and UI. Having a really good UI is super important to doing well in Mythic Plus, and understanding what you need enabled and what you need to have is something that a lot of people don't have with the basic default UI, so they miss a lot of important details that they need. So my UI currently consists of two primary weak auras, technically three if you include the PI weak aura. Um, I'll be linking in the description all three of those that I'm currently using. The three main weak auras that I'm still currently using are the uh, Babylonus Windwalker group, um, the Details Aura group, the Details Boss Mods group. Um, ERT timers is super great to have. Uh, obviously the PI one and then Publix Chi, which is just a Chi tracker for you. There's nothing too crazy on how to configure those or set those up. Uh, once you import them, you can kind of move them around to what you want to do and how you want to see them. The other main thing that I currently use is LVUI. Now I have kind of a hybrid LVUI in which I'm using Domino's bars on top of the 
LVUI that I'm currently using. So I'll be able to actually just export um, both those profiles, I believe, and you guys can kind of just copy and look at those. I believe the Domino's profile cannot be copied or exported. Um, so when you get Domino's open, you can kind of just configure your bars to kind of look like how I have them, or you can move them around. The LVUI that I'm using comes with like a additional uh, add-on that you're gonna need just to be able to configure it and make sure everything lines up correctly. And then the last final piece of my UI kind of comes from ERT, which is now known as Method Raid Tools. I can also export that profile. You guys can kind of just import that and move it around as if you want. Um, I'm kind of just tracking the most important cooldowns for each class in spec. At least for my uh, Method Raid Tools, I try to track mostly defensives. And then as you guys can see on the left, when we're actually in a group, I can kind of pull up this clip here just to show you. You can see how everyone else's offensive cooldowns are being tracked there as well. Being able to track your healer CDs or tank CDs is super important to know or kind of get you an idea of how big they're going to be pulling and what they're going to be doing with their pull. Now there are a couple um, main macros that I currently use. Some of them are not being used, but I'm going to give them anyways. Uh, the Bone Dust Brew one is just to cast that cursor, so instead of having to double click your button and then click it with your mouse, um, it just throws the Bone Dust Brew at your target, or not really at your target, at where your mouse is targeted at. I have a first row talent macro, which kind of just swaps between um, Eye of the Tiger, Chi Wave, and Chi Burst, depending on what you're playing. This is kind of just in general, if you do multiple forms of content. I have a Diffuse macro, which kind of just uh, cancels Fist of Fury. And then I did have an Expel Harm macro just to look cool with the Celebration Firework, but since they disabled that, it just does Expel Harm, so that one's not really important. Obviously, I have a, um, I have a Tiger Palm macro, which kind of just stops casting of Crackling J Lightning and stops Fist of Fury. And then as you can see on the screen as I'm scrolling through, those are the remainder of my add-ons that I use in one way or another. Overall, I have a pretty simple UI. Um, the idea is just to be able to have everything in one location so your eyes aren't wandering over all, all over the screen and to make sure you can see everything while you're moving around. Like I said, all of this is going to be down in the description below so you guys can go check that out. Anyways guys, that's about it for my 9.2 Windwalker Monk Guide. Um, all my resources used and everything is going to be down in the description below. So if you were confused at any point during the guide, you can check out the description or you can just leave a comment and I can try to help you out. One thing that I'm currently looking at is potentially um, having you guys send in gameplay and then me critiquing the gameplay in a video and kind of just giving general tips and helping you guys out with that if that's something that would interest you guys. Anyways, if you made it this far in the video, please drop a like. This took me countless hours, multiple weeks during my finals and everything to make, so it'd be really appreciated if you guys could leave a like and subscribe. Within our first month, we're already pretty much close to 100 subs, so that's pretty cool. Thank you guys so much for the support recently on everything. Um, I'm going to try uploading a lot more often in the summer, so maybe twice a week instead of once a week. Anyways, guys, thank you all for watching. If anything changes at any point during this patch, I will be including the information um, as a comment on this video, or I'll be making an updated video for the guide. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.